Hi, my name is Ida May and I'm super excited to welcome my first guest on the mat. If I would describe her with one word, Wonder Woman would be the one. She's an actress, model, entrepreneur. She started acting at the age of 10 and since then she's been appearing on various different films, being a pretty badass woman as she is. You might have seen her in Batman, Dark Knight Rises, Krypton, Justice League, and of course, Wonder Woman. She's also done many campaigns for Adidas, Sweaty Betty, Gymshark, Londoner, and she also has her own fitness clothing brand, Lotus and Air. I'm super excited to welcome Andrea Vassilier. Hi, Hello. I'm so excited to have you. I'll just bash my <laughs> <laughs> start. Well, I guess you're quite used to bashing yourself around, aren't you? Oh yeah, probably. Yeah, With all the all the amazing roles you've done, oh. um, so I'm quite excited to hear how do you prep for these roles, or who are you actually? Because the thing is, yeah. when I think of Andrea, she's this badass woman, and then you appear, and you yeah. are literally the sweetest, the softest, and the kindest girl. <laughs> keep, keep talking. <laughs> So who are you? Oh, uh, I don't know. It's so funny because I kind of fell into it because um, I started doing like fitness modelling even though I was rubbish at sports when I was young. I was always in the like the third team and everything. So I was like, oh, I'm not good at sports. And then as soon as I came to uni, I was like, let me just try and like get into training. And I really enjoyed it and then fell into fitness modelling and started working for brands that way. And then from there, I got spotted to audition for Wonder Woman. And that was like where we kick-started the martial arts and like stunt training sort of thing for um for like weapon training roles and stuff like that so it's all like happened kind of naturally but it's not something that I was like right this is what I want to do I just loved action films and I thought let's let's that would be really cool to do and then it just kind of happened which is nice did you yeah. do any um martial arts or sword fighting or anything like that before the film no, I did a bit of boxing. Um, I got a PT who was lovely and he was like, oh, I'll train you to do boxing because I think you've naturally got quite a good ability for that. So I was like, cool, and I really enjoyed it. It was like a good stress buster, like, because uh, I have a lot of energy. So I was like, I need to let it out some way. Um, yeah, so I kind of did that. And then um, when we were auditioning, we had to learn some choreography and then they kind of like assessed our ability and then taught us. We did about six months of training Monday to Friday, uh, four hours a day. So that like really kicked us into shape, which was fun. So how long was this uh, process before you actually started shooting? So how yeah. many, so you said four hours a day, which is pretty, pretty intense. It's more like almost like athlete type of training. So yeah. how long was the period? Was it a month or two, half a oh, year? No. Uh, yeah, it was half a year. So basically for Wonder Woman, we did six months training. So that was uh, Monday, Wednesday, th Monday, Wednesday, Friday would be like intense weight training because they wanted us to bulk, bulk up and then shred. So we did like four months of bulking and then two months of shredding. And then Tuesday, Thursday would be recovery. So again, you'd be doing like long steady state cardio for like, so we do like an hour and a half in the gym and then the rest of the time, the other like two and a half hours would be weapon, sword fighting, learning to use the weapons. Um, spear fighting, um, you know, all of that stuff. So it was kind of like learning, learning the basic moves, and then learning like a bit of gradual choreography. And yeah, it was like a lot of like slashing boxes, which was kind of fun, <laughs> and tumbling. Um, yeah, so that was cool, and that was at Warner Brothers Studio. Yeah, sounds awesome. Um, you said you had your recovery um, was cardio. Yeah. I'm quite interested to hear what's your recovery at the moment? Because you do a lot of things. You run into the castings, you're prepping for films, mm. you do modeling, you run your own brand. Yeah. What is your daily recovery? How uh, do you recover now? Oh, um, I think I just offload to my mum. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. Just tell her all my problems. Uh, no, I, I basically try to... Uh, breathing is really important so like yoga has really taught me to kind of center myself and calm slightly because I am quite like I love running at a million miles an hour but you have to have you know balance so I think um, I went on a yoga retreat a few years ago and that just kind of changed my mentality towards yoga and it's really helped me come a long way with like just kind of relaxing and unwinding at night you know breathing, um, doing, you know, like this, th like counting to five, holding it, and then pr like breathe out, all of that stuff. And like mindfulness, I love listening to like 
um, self hypnosis before bed and like stretching out in the mornings, just like tiny little things that like are like rituals in the mornings and the evenings that kind of like help me like get ready for the day and then relax for the day. But nice. Yeah, it's a bit weird. <laughs> this, this kind of takes us to yoga, which is like almost like opposite to all the action stuff. Yeah. And go, it takes us into your brand, which is Lotus and Air. Oh, yeah. Um, so yeah, tell us about Lotus and Air. Where does the name come from? Yeah. Um, I can feel when I'm not wearing it, I feel quite like an Amazonia warrior with this uh, yeah. top, <laughs> but there's the, this girly bit on the bottom. Yeah, so it's, a, it's so a, almost like a mix of Andrea yourself. Oh yeah. Um, so oh, yeah, tell sweet. us something about the brand. Um, what, what does it, what do, well, where does it come from? Yeah, Lotus, um, we were just inspired by the Lotus plant and then air is like, you know, free flowing. So we kind of put it together and we kind of thought about different um, words for the brand, but we liked that idea. And um, yeah, I guess for in terms of the design, um, we wanted something a little bit different because often with um, with uh, active wear, it can be very like streamlined and cool, but you know you you don't really have anything that's that unique. You know, a lot of the brands look quite similar, so we wanted some styles that look a bit different um, and like push it a little bit. And because we're quite big in the U.S. market, they're a bit more you know experimental with their style. <laughs> um, so we kind of like cater for that and. Um, the first collection, the initial collection that we have on Wolf and Badger is all, all the black outfits, and that's um, based around the, the chakras. So each each outfit has um, focuses on a different chakra. So um, if you don't know about that, it's it's worth looking into because uh, that's actually helped me a lot with like you know healing and, and, and energy flow. Um, just learning about the different chakras and how that can help you know connect your mind and your body together. And yeah, so we kind of wanted to like complement. Um, an outfit that would like focus on that as well and then like the ruffles is something a bit different um, and you can wear that out of the gym not just training which is cool because like a lot of us live in active wear day to day so we want something yeah. a bit more wearable <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that's that was the whole concept behind it awesome yeah. um, and that kind of leads me to a question um, how or what would you give to our audience something practical that they can implement to their daily life to realign themselves to tune them back into themselves because i believe it's all about these little moments these little snippets that you can adapt to your day to make yourself feel happy make yourself feel good um so what would be your little trick or your little routine or whatever it is that um, uh well I think there's, in, in, like we just spoke about briefly, like having a ritual in the morning and the evening is quite nice. Like I know in the indigenous communities, someone told me this and I was like, ooh, really? Uh, they, use, they use a lot of rituals in their day-to-day -day lives. And I think that that's quite important to like implement in our lives. So even if it's like just waking up in the morning, counting to five, breathing in and out, doing focused breathing, five long breaths, looking in the mirror, what's my intention? Or just thinking about it, stretching out, then going to get your lovely coffee. Just having Love like it. that, that takes what? Three, three, four minutes, but it really kind of just helps you like relax and get excited for the day or think, okay, how am I feeling? Mm, okay, I don't feel great today. You know, like last night was, yes, I had a bad day. Today's a new day. So it's like all about thinking about, okay, what can I do to make myself feel better or um, get more energy or, you know, depending on like, just be okay with how you're feeling that day and be okay with, okay, yeah, if yesterday was stressful or hard, today might be an easier day. So it's just like having that. <laughs> awesome, I yeah. love it. I love coffee, I love breathing. <laughs> yeah. um, and that leads us to our little flow. So Andrea asked me to create a flow that she could do in the morning, something quick, something to wake her up, also something to help her to recover from the Australia's training that she's doing for all these action films and I've created her a nice little 10 minute flow which is focusing on the hips yeah. and hopefully making you feel really good but before we get onto the mat um, what's next what are you working on at the moment um, well I'm doing a film I've got an Adidas campaign tomorrow actually which will oh, be quite fun brilliant <laughs> yeah and then um, I'm doing a movie in LA where I'm playing the lead um, it's called Penelope Lewis and she's a musician and she travels through Joshua Tree and um, Palm Springs and finds out about her dad who was a rock star but he unfortunately died. So that's going to be really fun. And then I'm doing a horror movie in America as well. Um, so next year, just like prepping for those roles and 
auditioning, hustling as always. <laughs> but yeah, it's fun. <laughs> awesome. Um, so yeah, and where can we find you online or in real life? Okay, so uh, my Insta handle is at Andrea Vassiliou. It's kind of a mouthful. And then um, also the brand Lotus On Air, you can buy it online um, at Wolf and Badger stores and also in in stores in New York and London. So International. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's get onto the mat. So come to the front of the mat, feet hip width distance apart so it's nice and relaxed, soft bend the knee, and then just close the eyes to start with, just to give yourself a moment to land and really ground into the space. And let's take an inhale in through the nose. And exhale out through the mouth. <sighs> mm, let's take one more though. So inhale into the body. Pause on the top to create a little bit of space. And exhale side all out. <sighs> then blink the eyes open. Let's reach the arms up so you're going to find a nice big stretch through the body. Take a hold of the left wrist. Bend the knees and use your right hand to pull and do a little half moon shape over to the right. Really push down through the left sole of the foot and then take your body through the center. Now take a hold of the right wrist. So create the length first and then stretch over to the other side. You can bring the body weight onto your right foot. And then take your body through the center. Release your hands behind your back just to open up the shoulders, open up the heart, lift the heart up. And with the exhale, lead with the heart and take your body all the way down. Relax in the shoulders, release in the head. Then release your hands down towards the floor. Dropping the hands all the way down to the floor. Relax the hands. Yep, yeah, that's it. <laughs> then place your hands onto the shins so look forward, come to flat back. And with the exhale, place your hands down to the floor and step your feet back to high plank. So we're going to bring a little bit of power into the practice as well. Then bend your knees, push the hips back. So you're coming into a loaded beast, really spreading the fingers out wide. Then looking down towards the navel, extend your legs and ripple forward like a wave. So you're going to come all the way forward. Then bend your knees, push the hips back. This is one of my favorite, favorite ways to warm the body up. So extend your knees and ripple forward like a wave. Come all the way to the front of the mat. Nice. And then do two more, really using the breath. So bending the knees. Exhale, ripple forward all the way into high plank. And last one, bend your knees, push back. And exhale, ripple forward all the way into the high plank. Then drop your knees down to the floor. Drop your chest and the chin down to the floor. Snaking forward into the baby cobra. Maybe lift it up into the upward dog if that feels good. And then let's find the downward dog. So it might be your first downward dog of the day. So you can pedal the feet out. Do what feels good in your body. That's what it's all about. Feeling good in your body. Once you've had enough of pedals or wiggles, whatever, start finding a little bit of stillness in your down walk dogs and really spread the fingers out wide. Rotate the biceps forward, triceps back, open the sit bones out. You might want to soften the knees so your back is nice and straight so you can really open the sit bones out. Then bring your feet together at the back and lift your right leg up to the ceiling. Bend your right knee to open the right hip up. If you want to take it a little bit further, you can drop your left forearm down to the floor. This is just an option. But as I have Andrea here with me, she's pretty, pretty amazing mover already. So I just wanted to add an extra little challenge here. Now bring your right knee in towards your left elbow. So you're going to find the activation on the core and a little bit of power. So you're going to activate the obliques. Then from here, cross your knees. Bring your right thigh over the left and come back to the downward dog. So legs are in a kind of a eagle leg position here. From here, inhale, come forward. And here's your little warrior woman challenge. Chaturanga, so elbows to the waistline. You can drop the knees down to the floor. I know this is <laughs> pretty tough. Exhale, lift it back up and then lift the knee up. Good, let's do two more of these. So drop the knee, bring the elbows towards the waistline. Exhale, use the breath. Lift it up, lift the knee off the floor. If you're super hardcore, do it with knee floating off the floor. One more. Chaturanga, exhale. Lift it up, push your hips back up. Nice, really good use of breath. Um, so you're back in the downward dog. Now from here, we're gonna come into a variation of a fallen star. So bring your left heel towards the right, bend your left knee, and so your legs are nice and crossed. You can hook the right toes as well, if it's there for you, and then reach your left arm up and over. So you have a le leg in the eagle leg. Keep pushing the right heel as a hand forward, so you're creating space through the right shoulder. Exhale, look down towards the right hand, Place your left hand onto the floor, 
flip the dog over, bring your right foot behind you to come into the wild thing. Lifting the hips nice and high, and again, create the space in the body. Hips are the heaviest part of the body, so lift them up. With the exhale, look down to the left hand. Bring your right knee towards your uh, nose, and float your right foot next to your left hand. You can go as slow as you can. The slower you go, the harder it is. You can even use your right hand to assist to place your right foot next to your left hand. So bring that right foot all the way forward. Yep. And then drop the left knee down to the floor. Oh. Inhale. <laughs> yes. Good warm up, kid. Wake up for the body. Wake up the mind. Um, interlace the fingers and bring your index fingers up to the ceiling. And now push the chest forward. So I thought this one's really amazing for the shoulders, especially if you're boxing loads, doing any of archery or that. Work with the, with the, with the boys here, guns and all that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so it opens up the shoulders a little bit as well. <laughs> yeah, so we're combining the hip action here as well. Then bring your left hand onto the floor and flex your right toes and you're going to twist towards the right. So here we go, hello glutes, lift your right arm up and stack your shoulders on the top of one another and reach your right arm straight up to the ceiling. That's it, and bring your right hip back. Good. And really spiral your left ribs under with the right. Nice. Keep circling the right arm forward, right hand forward. Bend your right knee, and we're going to come into a lizard. So shuffle the right foot all the way to the side. Right toes can be pointing out, hands underneath the shoulders. Lift your left knee off the floor. So this is quite active, so it wakes the body up, but it's also really, really nice after, after your gym session or whatever you're up to. With the exhale, we're going to stretch the front knee out. Do not worry about the alignment too much. Just stretching the leg. Maybe elbows come onto the floor. And then coming back into your lizard. A little bit of a dynamic stretching. It should feel quite nice in the, nice in the hips. Stretching the front knee out. And then bending it back in. And now using that breath here. So lifting the hips up. Inhale in. And exhaling out. Dropping the hips down. Let's do it once more. So lift the hips high, flexing the foot at the front if you want it into the calves as well. And then we're going to lower it down to a lizard. If you want to keep it active, you keep the knee off the floor. If you want a bit more restorative, you drop the knee, untuck the toes. If you want to take it deeper, you can even drop your forearms down to the floor. You can use your right hand, heel of the hand, to press the right knee out so it goes quite deep into the hips. And if you're at home and you want to spend a longer time in this one, you can just press pause and spend a little bit longer. This is a very, very good one for the hips. Yes. <laughs> From here, we're going to release the hands. Let's place some um, forearms onto the floor. If the forearms are not on the floor, hands are on the floor. Tuck the left toes under and come either into high plank or low plank. You're going to float your right foot next to the left if you're in a high plank. Now drop the forearms down onto the low plank. Spread the fingers out wide. Start walking your feet towards your face to come into the dolphin. So now you get that nice juicy stretch through the shoulders as well. Press in the chest gently down towards your thighs. Head is nice and released. If you want more power, you can add a couple of press-ups here. If you want to work your pinch up, do that. Just do what feels good on your body right now. Take one more deep breath in here. With the exhale, simultaneously, or one arm at a time, lift your arms back up into your downward dog. Find the place on the mat, maybe pedal the feet out, then bend your knees. We're going to reset the body with that wave that we did in the beginning. Exhale, ripple all the way forward into the high plank. Then drop the knees, drop the chest, drop the chin. Snake forward into baby cobra, open the chest out. Upward dog. Exhale, taking a downward dog. Bring your feet together at the back, lift your left leg up to the ceiling and bend your left knee, drop your right forearm down to the floor. Nice. Good. From here, simultaneously bring your right knee to the left elbow. Squeeze it all in. So bring it all in. Work those obliques. Then cross your legs. So bring your left knee over the right. Lift your hips nice and high to come into the downward dog. Inhale, come forward, high plank. Three chaturanga press-ups from here. So option, drop the knee down, elbows back. Exhale, lift it back up. Good, two more. Bend it in. We're really working those triceps. And lift it back up. And last one also, we get a little bit of work in the core. Now we're going to meet up in a downward dog. Nice. From here, bend your right knee. Bring your right heel towards the back. Variation of a fallen star. Hook the toes if it's there for you. And then lift your right arm up. So you get a good stretch of the right side of the body, squeezing the inner thighs together. 
Exhale, place your right hand onto the floor. Flip the dog over. So you bring your left foot behind you, lifting the hips nice and high. Opening up the shoulders, opening up the heart. Keep breathing into it. So even in the places that you need a little bit of strength, find the breath. So you find a knee. Then look down to the right hand. Float to your left foot next to your right hand. Super, super slowly. The slower you go, the more power you can find. Find that power within. <laughs> yeah, dropping the left knee down to the floor. Then from here, sweep your arms up. Opening out those shoulders. Maybe to be the non-dominant grip this time. So cross the other thumb over. Lifting the heart up. Pressing the back of the head into your arms. Just opening the heart up. Really sinking deep into those hips. Bringing the right hip forward, left hip back. Then with the exhale, place your right hand onto the floor, stretch your front leg, flex your left foot, and twist and rotate towards the left. Create that space in between of the shoulder blades. Really finding that stretch into the glutes. So stick the bum back. With the exhale, circle the left arm forward, and bring your hands inside at the left foot, and shuffle the left foot towards the outside of the mat, so you create space for the hips. And from here, let's lift that right knee up. You can move forward and back if it feels good. I always encourage you to do what feels right in your body. With the exhale, we're going to stretch the front leg out. Maybe flex the foot. Maybe the elbows come down to the floor. Maybe not. Inhale. Coming forward into your lizard. And with the exhale, lift it back up. Key thing is that you're moving. So your muscles get that ox and moving. <laughs> moving. I mean moving and breathing. <laughs> So keep breathing so the muscles get the oxygen. Ah, so I could stretch it deeper. And then last one. We're going to drop that right knee down to the floor. Make that lizard nice and restorative. Option for arms on the floor if you're a spasm. <laughs> and it's also fine. Some days we might be up here. Or maybe you are working your way down. It's all about that journey. It doesn't matter where you are at the moment. As long as you feel it in the hips. It doesn't matter how you look like. But I always think it's all about how it feels like, and it should feel pretty good. <laughs> From here, to take it a little bit deeper. Well, actually, we didn't do it on the other side. Let's not take it deep. <laughs> We're going to leave it here. So you're going to bring your forearms down. Um, keep your forearms down onto the floor. Spread the fingers out wide. If I'm going to do the other variation on this side now. So keep your hands up high. So now float your left foot next to your right to come either into the high plank or the low plank. Yep, and if you're in a high plank, drop the elbows down, and now just walk your feet towards your face again, just to come into that dolphin. Sometimes I like to keep my hands in prayer, sometimes I like to press it down, um, palms facing down, just do what feels right and nice for you. Then take one deep breath in here with the exhale, elevate both elbows off the floor to come back into the down walk dog. Let's bend your knees, bend both knees, and then ripple forward into the high plank. Okay, we're going to do the final vinyasa. So drop the knees, drop the chest, drop the chin, and snake forward. Baby cobra, up walk dog, lift up. Exhale, taking a down walk dog. Take an inhale in through the nose. Exhale out through the mouth. And drop your knees down to the floor. Let your knees fall open nice and wide, so you go deep into your hips and take a child pose. Drop your forehead down to the floor. A couple of breaths here just to ease yourself in. And you can stay there for as long as you want to. You can roll your spine up to come back up to a seated position and take your final savasana. So just do what feels nice and right for you. If you have more time and you feel invigorated and you want to go further, do that. Um, but otherwise,